How you doing everybody? Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. This little video is about cutting forces that are acting on your workpiece uh, or actually on the tool uh, when you're cutting in the lathe. I put this together with some uh, visual aids even uh, <laughs> and I hope this helps. Uh, due to the questions that came from the cross slide, not that I designed for the closing lathe. Now I haven't really have it in operation. I mean it's, I haven't been using the lathe yet because I'm not done uh, repairs but uh, I, I really think it's going to work and uh, this will help uh, clarify some of the forces acting on your tool and on your lathe. Uh, I found some pretty good information so stick with me help clarify a few things for everybody. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, I'm going to respond to some of the comments about the closing lathe and the cross feed adjustable uh, nut for the lead screw and the forces uh, acting on when cutting. I did a bunch of research about this um, online and uh, there's a there, there's, fair, there's fair amount of information online. Uh, most of it all is pertaining though to the cutting forces in, de, in the end determination of horsepower needed uh, to turn the spindle to do the work. Mostly because it's all related to CNC work and for the horsepower of the machine but anyway it's it's still all the same <laughs> how the cutting forces are applied to the tool uh, really is the same if you're familiar with a shaper uh, a shaper cuts you know he, you got your work you got your work piece boom and it it comes and cuts straight lines back and forth back and forth and then it moves over cuts another time moves over cuts another time and the force, so the forces there are in one direction, and so that's pretty, pretty simple to figure out. And that's what this here is uh, talking about here. This this little diagram and the tool here is cutting, and the chip is peeling up, and the force is acting on the tool. When you get into uh, orthogonal, orth, orthogonal cutting, <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, and that, and that just means that the cutting action is uh, 90 degrees to the cutting edge. You have, you end up with another force where you have the, the one force of the, the, the rotation of the, of, the to, of the work and coming down on top of your tool, and you have a feed force. So you have two actions going on there. Here, here's a nice little picture, kind of. So depending on... You have your, your rotation here that they're showing that as V here. Th this, di um, this diagram is for, to show you all three things going on. But first off, if your cutting edge is square here to the, to the work and, and, and being traveling down the shaft, right? You're going to have only really two forces, and that's the force coming down on top of the tool and the force going this way. There really is no force uh, pushing back on your on your tool toward the operator on your cross slide. If you are at 90 degrees to the work as your cutting edge progresses uh, uh, down the work, this cutting edge is at 90 degrees. But when you start to put an angle on it, here, that's when you start to develop forces that are pushing out against you, uh, pushing back toward the operator on the cross slide. In most, in all the cases I found, as far as all the all the all the diagrams and and things like that that I found, all the research, seventy eight. They come up with set a number. They don't give you the numbers of the actual force forces they come up with, their data, but the forces are 70 to 80 percent of the force is downward, is straight down here, FC, a straight downward force. So most of it is all the cutting force coming down. Over 20 percent to you know to the rest of it, you know, as if you're talking 70 percent, so you're talking 20 to 30 percent left over. That most of all of that is in the feed force. This way, right? Or it's actually a vector pushing back at it but that would be the the f1 force here but when you start to turn this at an angle that f1 force is at 90 degrees to that cutting edge 
And so that starts to give you a vector back towards you. And that would be the, you know, here the FP. And you get a component of it. Some of it is, is towards you. Some of it is at an angle to the cross slide. But you get a component back towards you. So we're talking, uh, if you don't do that, you get basically almost no, basically no forces back at you which is a uh, quite interesting and the amount of force left over with 70 to 80 percent of the stuff coming down on top of you there's really not a lot of force left to uh to to send into the cross slide back to push back at you so you know the and, and they don't even they when in all their calculations they don't even consider the force coming back at you they they all they use is the two forces the the force coming down and the feed force basically in their calculations they they discount the other force because they they believe it's so small this, this diagram i thought was quite interesting and this is a lathe setup with a tail here's the tail stock your workpiece and the headstock and they're showing you all the vectors of forces that are acting on each piece of work uh when you're working with a lathe. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting to uh, take a look at. So here's the cutting, I'm oh, sorry, here, here's the cutting tool uh, right here. But uh, if you keep your, if you keep your tool square to the work and uh, feeding along the, your work, well, it doesn't matter which way you're feeding, but as long as you're feeding along your work and the tool cutting edge is square to the work, you really have little to no force coming back at you on, the, on your cross slide. It's all pushing down. That's why a rigid tool post is, is this is where a rigid tool post, rigid, rigid gibs uh, on your compound, on your cross slide, uh, where your carriage is attached to your bed, to your, to your ways, is uh, so important uh, is that being able to absorb all that force is coming down so uh, anyway i just wanted to show you that stuff uh, um, it's, it was pretty good information it's pretty technical information but uh, the the numbers about the 70 percent and the 80 percent and how they discount even the, the the forces are so small that they they hardly even count them if at all. Most of the time, they never even considered them. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll uh, try to keep up with you. We're over here at the lathe. I'm going to try to show you a visual representation of the cutting forces that they talk about in the papers I read uh, on all the stuff they did. What they used was a three-axis dynamometer uh, that they made to measure the three forces, three uh, axes the forces are acting on. So this one here is the rotational cutting force where it's coming down on top of the tool, the green wire here. The yellow wire here, this one, is the longitudinal axis from the feed rate as your tool is pushing in, right? And then this orange wire is the wire pushing on your crossfeed nut, pushing back here at you toward the operator. So, as the papers will say, 70-80% of the forces are right here, coming down on top of your tool. That one right there. Then now you have 20-30% to 30 of forces. Most of those are all made up in here. You know, maybe 15%, somewhere around there at least, uh, are of those rest of those forces are are right here. You know, of a hunt when you know we're dividing up all the cutting forces. So you got 70, 80 percent, and then you know maybe 15 percent or or even more. It could be clear up into the 20s and 30 percent. If you have almost zero in this one here. If your cutting edge is square to the work in this axis, they're saying that there is no cutting force or almost zero. That's why they don't even count it uh, in this <coughs> excuse me in this axis because the force 
acts at 90 degrees to the cutting edge. And this is the one that would be 90 degrees to the cutting edge right here as you're feeding. Uh, so what can happen is if you have your cutting edge here and it's at an angle, let's say over here like that, your forces will will turn. They will they will not be all the way here or all the way here. They'll be somewhere in between, depending on the angle. More angle, the more the more angle, the more it moves over this way. Less angle from 90 degrees. Less angle, it's over here more. Uh, so that's it's pretty much that's it. That's it. Uh, <laughs> You know, you can, uh, and then using a negative rake, positive rake, neutral rake tool will also change the amount of forces uh, that are total, I should say, uh, because it affects, you can affect your, or you can affect it by your feed rate, taking lighter cuts, right? Now, facing cuts when you, or a parting, when you're pushing straight into your work, all your forces are here and on this, coming down on top let's say, and this one here. Those are the two forces. There's, there's zero force here. So if you still have 70, 80% here, then you only have 20 to 30%. Oops, I pulled my wire out. You only have 20 to 30% here coming straight back. Uh, so uh, on facing cuts or parting, something where you're pl pl plunging straight in, is when you're going to have your most force, of course, on this one here. Thanks, you guys, for sticking with me on that uh, discussion about the cutting forces of the lathe. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe. And uh, here at the end of the video, there's a button for it, and you can go down below somewhere, of course, and subscribe and get notifications. If you click on that little bell, you'll get notifications of the next videos. And... Uh, I hope this uh, cleared up some questions about cutting forces. It, it's a kind of an interesting subject. And uh, we'll get some more quick videos out and more technical details about metalworking and such. So thank you, guys. Thanks for watching.